So in my short life span of living on this earth so far, the human life is filled with a lot of crises. <laughs> but in the end, somehow things just end up working out. Um, I mean, in the eyes of one person, this is terrible. The world's going to end. What are we going to do? You know, but then uh, when you allow things to just work out through time, and you understand why it happened in your life. Now, um, as a daughter of a, you know, an immigrant, I at first was not very you know, happy with a few things, but I just kind of you know, stuck it out um, and somehow made it through. So <laughs> this kind of, uh, with, the, with the world events, I was kind of And for some reason, there's this story that I just kind of wanted to share with all of you. Um, last week at Guy's retirement party, I found out that this Persian who works on the same floor as me was actually, is actually the dad of one of my high school classmates. And from there, I just thought, okay, maybe I should just go into some stories of Persia because he's Persian and Persians have some, some interesting stories. So today, I want to tell you about the story of Esther, who long ago lived in the country of Persia, which is also known as Babylon. Um, so there's this king named Akash Rosh, which is his Jewish name, but his Persian name is Xerxes, I think. And then he asked his queen, Vashti, to, to show up at a party just so that he could show everyone how pretty she was. But then she refused. And then the king was furious, so then he, he ordered her to you know, get thrown away because he was afraid that people were going to hear about how the queen disobeyed the king, and then everyone else was going to disobey authority, and you know, that's just a bunch of bad stuff from there. So then the king needed a queen as a replacement. So then he ordered uh, this, you know, his his men to go out there and find him a wife. And somehow they ran into this young, beautiful, kind, gracious girl named Esther. Now, Esther was a Jew, and the Jews at this time were driven out of Israel, and they were exiled to Persia. So, in general, the Jews didn't really have that great of a reputation in this land. So, like, oh, you guys are exiles. You're living in this country because you have nowhere else to live. You know, so, so she kind of kept that on down low. But it turns out that her uncle, named Mordecai, is the leader of the Jews. So he basically told her, you know, keep things on down low. Um, I know you're scared because, you know, Esther, she's a very timid, quiet girl. And she didn't really know what to do. She was, like, kind of freaking out. Like, oh my goodness, I'm now going to be the queen to this king. And I have no idea how to act because I'm not queen status. But she, she ended up just, you know, following her uncle's advice. So within the government, there's this new prime minister called Haman. And this guy is like very proud. He's like, oh my goodness, I'm now a new prime minister. Why don't I have everyone bow to me? I'm going to have a ceremony, have everyone bow to me. So everyone bowed to him except for Mordecai. He got so mad. He's like, oh my gosh, why is this little man not bowing to me? I am the prime minister. So from here, I kind of noticed from him, this guy is very, like, he has a superiority complex. He's trying to like impose it on other people. So this is what happens when you have a superiority complex. You think, I'm so much better than you. Why are you not bowing down to me? You know, and then it just kind of shows. So then he he asks the king, can, can we execute all the Jews? Because um, this, this Jew didn't bow to me. And I know this guy's a Jew. So maybe that happens for him. I'm just like, wow, this guy. Well, over the top, but whatever, it's fine. Things will work out, right? So, so in this story, it's like, oh my goodness, Esther is now the queen. You, this, you know, this group of people are about to die because you know the prime minister just ordered the king to kill all the Jews, and yeah, so the world's gonna end somehow. It's gonna end. But then Mordecai goes to Esther and goes, hey, so this is what's happening. <laughs> I refuse to bow to this guy, and now our people are in danger. So is it okay if you go before the king and like kind of ask him for help? And, you know, Esther was just like, you know, you're, 
You're not allowed to go in front of the king unless you have permission to do it. And then, you know, Morika was like, you know, there might be a reason why you were placed to be queen at this point in time. And then she's like, okay, I'll, I'll think about it. So she thinks about it for like three days. And then eventually she must just have the courage to go for the king. And the king at first, when, you know, he saw her approach the throne, was like, oh, what, what are you doing here? And she was like, oh, um, can you go out to dinner with me and your prime minister? Like, I just want to have dinner with you guys, just get to know you. <laughs> and they were like, okay, sure, why not? So then at dinner, the king was like, oh, why don't, um, is there something that you want to, you know, ask me, Esther? Like, I'll give you anything up to half of my kingdom. Not my entire kingdom, but half of my kingdom. So then Esther was like, okay, um, why don't you come to a banquet with me tomorrow with with your prime minister and yourself and anyone else. So they go to the banquet, and then eventually, after some time passed, the king asks her again, what is it that's on your heart? And then he tells her, she tells him, you know, my my people are actually kind of in danger. Is it okay if you uh, help them out? <laughs> like, your prime minister is actually about to kill my people. So the king was furious about that, and then eventually the king was like, okay, you uh, you know those gallows that Haman made for your uncle? Yeah, you can go ahead and go there and just have everything work out that way. <laughs> so in the end, um, Esther, being the timid girl that she was, ended up you know, being trained in this process to become a little bit more brave and speak up, even though she was in a society where she Mordecai was just a renegade, you know, disobeying authority, and somehow everything just ended up working out for him. So I just thought the story was pretty interesting, and I just wanted to share it with you because it just popped up in my mind, and there are some interesting twists to the story. So yeah, that's about it.